you think that the data set you have got is enough for making the prediction in your data science project? Well, no, because every data set has some features which are hidden and you have to dig a lot into the data to uncover those hidden variables. Well, yes, in this today's topic, I will going to talk about the feature engineering within any data science project or the data science data set that you have. And specifically in this video, we will look at the time series data set and see three different techniques along with some bonuses like uh, the shortcuts that I have, I will show you where you can do your work very quickly. So guys, this is Abhishek and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in into the feature engineering part. So first of all, we will going to, as usual, import pandas as pd, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and percentage matplotlib in line to show the plots if we need to create any. I'm not sure, I don't think we, I will create any because this is just a feature engineering, but still uh, if needed. So once we have done that, we can go ahead and execute. And before I pro proceed any further, just a quick information that uh, is the same uh, file that I've been using. As you can see, it has some previous code and which is related to the previous video and the previous project, part of the project that uh, I have added. And I have been using the same birth f female birth data set that I have and uh, the first column we are taking as an index which is nothing but date and we are parsing the first column as date so that Python can understand okay this is something which is a proper date and if you have seen my videos uh, the earlier two videos one of the issue is let's say if we execute this and see a couple of last rows using the tail method one of the issues is is daily female birth in California, right? So problem is with this is that apart from this low row, which is the last row, all the other row is basically having the uh, values which is within the range of anywhere 25 to 75. But this 1959 is is a big outlier, which is nothing but the year for in which the data was recorded. So how we can remove that is by using the n rows n r o w s n rows uh, parameter and in that we can specify how many rows we want to take. So including this we have 366 rows but up until here which is 12 December 1959 we have 365. So we'll go ahead and execute this and if we execute again that last row is gone now. So earlier we used a different methods like um, removing the row using um, you know the the specifying the numbers uh, within the or the index number using on the data set but I just wanted to show you another method by which you can uh, you know use this parameter number of rows and get remove all the rows which you don't want. You can also explore more methods. So if I go at the end and press shift tab tab, you will see a lot of different methods right um, over here. So n rows is something what we use. There is a skip rows. Let's say first two or three rows contains the information about title of the file or some other information. You can skip the rows right from the start. So skip three, it will going to skip the first three rows so things like that so it's very very useful and a lot of features which are present over here and we will use it as and when it is required okay and one other request which i keep getting or i have received uh, is is using the shortcuts that i have used the shortcuts and uh, and i could i could create another video just to show you the shortcuts and you know which will be like 10 15 or 30 minutes but I want to just summarize all of these shortcuts in in just few seconds for you so that you are not wasting your time just whenever you are in here not in the code mode right so code mode is uh, basically going into the cell uh, and this is where we will going to start write the code and we 
I am calling it a code mode. But if I press escape, I am out of the code mode. That means the edit mode. So now when I'm out of this mode, I can just press H from my keyboard. And this will enable all of my keyboard shortcuts that I have, right? So I would just like you to go through with these, uh, with these shortcuts. But if even after that, if you want me to create something, uh, create a video on this, I mean, I can create it. I just have to take the information from here and show you just the most important one, which I keep using it. For example, uh, adding a new cell, uh, which is nothing but the B, which I press insert cell above A. And uh, there is one more D, which I use a lot to delete. Z is to undo cell, cell deletion, paste V. So all of this shortcut is present to you that you can go ahead and use it just by pressing the H from keyboard and it will display to you. Again, I'll press H and it will be displayed to me. All right. So just a quick sidetrack information. Now coming back to our original methods or original problem, which is uh, creating a feature engineering. So one of the very first thing you will do in any time series or if you have read any other blog or if if you know a little bit about the time series is creating a lag variable so lag variable i have covered it in my even the first video where we just uh, went through very quickly on the on the project creating the the uh, arima model for the prediction of values and lag lag values is nothing but uh, with the concept that the previous value is the best reflector of current value. That means the 37 value is the best reflect for this particular value. Even though the next value is little bit large uh, or it may be little bit less. But within the time series, it is assumed that the previous value is very well correlated with the current value. And that's why we call it a best reflector. Sometimes you have to go two step back. So for example, when we are at 48, 37 is the best reflector. When we are at 55, 52 is the best reflector. So we are going two step, one and two, sometimes even three step. So for 55, the best reflector is 37. For 50, best reflector is 52. So this way, we try to go back one step, two step or three step back and try to see whether this particular value is the best reflector for the current value and with the help of that we create the uh, like variables just to see uh, a good correlation that is present and can help us explain the model and give us the good output so how we can create it is first of all uh, what i need is uh, i need to create one new column which is let's say lag one and that's how you will going to create a column specify the name of the object and lag one is your uh, column name like you have total female birth and equals to just say f underscore f underscore birth and uh, after that you use the shift method shift s h i f t shift and then specify one and then dot yeah no no mean because that's a different method i was just thinking so one good practice is even though you can do this but if we do a shift of two that means going two step back or coming back coming down to two step or coming down to three step by using one two three parameter uh, it will going to create an issue if we directly use f underscore birth but in case of shift one it will not do because it will directly pick up this this particular column so the best practice is just take this column name even though it is large enough but i just copy and paste it within the bracket paste it and execute it all right it has executed fine so f underscore birth dot had and that's where we have our lag one variable. So 35 is coming here, 32 is coming here, 30 is coming here, 31 is coming here, right? Similarly, if you want f underscore birth, b i r d 
h and lag 2 equals to uh, I will just copy this so that I don't write it and press shift 2 f underscore path dot I don't know why I write it wrong so you have two values similarly up until like lag 3 you can create and this will help you create the new variables for your uh, for your data set dot head and now actually what we have done is from univariate time series problem which was having earlier only the one column we have converted this into a multivariate uh, multivariate linear re linear regression problem or a multivariate time series problem because now we have four variables one two three and four so with these four variables we can basically uh, run through uh, ordinary least square or the linear regression and basically see whether uh, all of these variables really contributing into the uh, into the model or not all right so that's one one way of uh, how you can create how you can do the uh, feature engineering which is as i said when the very first method will be to uh, to create the lag variables next method is basically creating a rolling means or the moving average so moving average is nothing but let's say uh, or i have already explained in the project one but if you have not seen let me explain it here again so if you are saying that uh, we we need a moving average of three so what we will do is we will take the first these three value one two three we will add these three values and then divide by three that's the general formula for average you know sum the sum all the number and divide by the count of number and the output will come over here beside this similarly the next step is count these three values oh, sorry sum these three values and divide by count of values and the output is here similarly over here sum these values divide by the count of values which is three and the output will be here so this way uh, you will create another variable with the help of moving average so moving averages are very very important to first of all reduce the noise from the data set as i have explained earlier as well as uh, in the stock market if you have been into stock market or if you have heard the stock market technical analyst they are using a lot of moving averages which is with to, to basically define uh, or to basically smooth the, the entire series and uh, not only the simple moving average they even use the exponential moving average and they have a lot of techniques to to basically predict the stock prices just by moving averages all right so how you can create it so f underscore path and uh, what i'll do is i will say ma3 which is moving average hit three and in this moving average what we were going to do is f underscore or what i'll do is i need to copy this i don't want to write it copy this right and say rolling say window parameter which is three dot mean so what is going on here simply we are first specifying a new column name which is ma3 and we want to take up this column for compute for computation on this column we want to do a rolling mean that means first three period of mean so the period is specified over here using the window parameter so what it does is basically in a basic language it creates a window of this three from the entire set and perform the operation of mean only on these three values so that's the what what's going on behind the scene so if i execute this f underscore path dot had this is what i get right and uh, f underscore if i want i can i think the what we usually would like to do is like we have created the three lag variables it would be good to basically create at least uh, three variables for even the moving averages and basically you know 
see whether they are the true reflector into the model. So f underscore birth dot head. So head is over here and we can see uh, as and when we are moving ahead, we are getting more and more null values. So for birth, this, this, you get the null value. Not only this, so as you can see for rolling window three dot mean, so this window, this particular operation opens up a lot of permutation and combina combination that one can apply. And what I mean by that is, let's say uh, for some reason as a business, you figure it out from the subject matter expert that the, the particular window, let's say within the seven days, the maximum value is the true reflector of our business or the minimum value is the true reflector or of, of our baseline then what you can do is instead of mean you can even apply the min max or standard deviation so what i can do for you is i will just copy this let's say so that five day is basically the business period and uh, we will say max five or max underscore five just to reflect that and i'll come over here and i will execute this f underscore birth dot hat right so 44 because 1 2 3 4 5 this is 44 so from this window we have just captured the maximum value because our subject matter expert told that uh, the maximum value in any given business week is the true reflector of our business as we are in a high growth era so this way we can make sure that uh, we are picking up the right value as part of our data science model and uh, with the help of uh, the subject matter experts and uh, this way it will help us capture the so this particular statement helps us capture the right value or if your company is mature or is in an era which which has uh, which is like normal operations are going on and uh, it is important that you need to keep the minimum value so uh, for the baseline information so you can even keep the minimum of five so you just remove this and but dot hat you will have minimum five so now you can see from just one single variable with the help of a uh, little bit knowledge and creativity and with subject matter expertise we can create so many variables and the opportunities are endless. I mean, there is a seasonality factor that can come into the picture. There may be a trend factor which may come into the pack. There may be a cyclical factor or any other factor. The more you will dig with the, within the data or within the business, the more you will figure it out about the uh, feature engineering. And that's the most creative part apart from you know interpreting the model and all which is like uh, the straightforward ahead but you still need to be creative over there but feature engineering i personally feel is the most creative part within the entire data science process all right so this is something uh, where we have done most of the feature engineering there are a couple of other instances where we have seen like uh, people are even creating the the series on a day or on a month or on a year just by capturing the day week and day month and year and even in some cases using the resample method they, they even create the weekly series or the monthly series or the quarterly series so that's that's another way which is like uh, changing the entire data set itself for your um, purpose of prediction so i would just like to explain that how you can capture the week month or uh, sorry the day month or year information so what do we have is basically f underscore sorry f underscore birth day let's say we want to capture the day and want to create a variable out of it though it doesn't make a lot of sense however uh, if it is a daily series and we just want to capture the day we can create a separate data set all together uh, from it instead of forming this entire operation so f underscore birth day and we have f underscore birth dot um 
index because date is present in in the index so i just press the tab and it completed the statement and i will say day right if i execute this and f underscore birth dot head if i press head i got the day variable over here or the day column on which i can i don't know i mean i i you can even use it as a variable or you can even create a new um you can even create a new series from it. I think new, creating a new series makes more sense in this case. Similarly, uh, you have a lot of different things that you can do. For example, month. I believe it has the month. Yes. Score birth. Score head. Okay. Dot head. Now we got the month information also in a different column altogether. And this may be something like uh, you can create even the dummy variable if, if you are being more and more creative. I mean, that's that's like exploding your data set. Similarly, F underscore birth and say year F underscore birth dot index dot year F underscore birth dot had and you got the year parameter. And and it doesn't stop here at all. I mean, there there is another thing which you can do is basically the differencing, which is nothing but makes the uh, series more stationary by removing the trend seasonal or the cyclical component. And this way, you can basically uh, create a series which is having the order of difference, which is the difference of one, difference of two, or difference of three, and then try to see whether this is making sense in your model or not so so the opportunities what i'm trying to say is opportunities are endless when it comes to do the feature engineering uh, within the time series or any other data set but how you do it and uh, how you execute how you uh, want to take it ahead is simply based on the experimentation like i have always said as a data scientist you have to do you have to keep on experimenting so that you know more and more about uh, uh, about the data set and the more you know the better you will be able to predict with the help of the model now finally uh, in this particular tutorial the final thing i want to do is removing the na value so to remove the na value we have a very simple method f underscore birth dot drop any that is it sorry drop any and you can see over here we have no any's and the series is starting from here if you can relate with this so it is your series which is ready that you can actually put it into a model and I will show you in a next model, next video about how you can create the model on a multivariate time series. And uh, that is helpful in most of the cases for, for doing the predictions and all. So that's pretty much what I had for you in this video for doing the feature engineering. And I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, don't forget to make a comment in the comment section to, to let me know about it. And as well as if you have any question. And if you like the video, it will motivate me to create more and more video. And uh, as always, share the videos with your friends and with your colleagues so that even they can utilize the knowledge which, which you have and I'm sharing. So that's about it. And I'll meet you in the next video.